Hey everybody, this is Phil with Authors Insider Club and ebooktemplates101.com. In today's video, I'm going to talk about one of the biggest mistakes I see people making with images in their Kindle books. So here's the problem. If you have images in your books, a lot of people create these images and they end up looking good on one Kindle device, but when somebody's reading your book on a different Kindle device, the image gets cut off and looks awful and it makes you look bad. But not only that, it can ruin the other formatting from your book as well. And that is just a bad thing all the way around. So we're going to talk about that and talk about how to prevent that from happening and some different things you can do. So first, let's talk about why this is happening. All right. Well, there's so many different Kindle devices and different ways for people to read your book on the Kindle. So we have the standard Kindle, the Paperwhite, the DX. All of these, by the way, have different screen sizes and dimensions. And then we have the Kindle Fire tablets, and there's like four or five different tablets, and they all have different screen sizes and dimensions. And then there's also the iPad. A lot of people read Kindle books on their iPads. So there's all these different iPad sizes, not to mention if somebody actually reads, book, uh, reads your book on their Android or iPhone, those are different screen sizes as, as well. So if you have an image that is... Let's say, you know, it's sized perfectly for the iPad, okay? Well, if somebody's reading your book on the regular Kindle or maybe even the paper white, that image is going to get cut off and it's going to make your book look awful. And the fact of the matter is there's a lot more people reading books on the cheaper devices like the regular Kindle because it's like a $69 device than there is reading your book on a $200 device or a $500 device. So you have to make sure that you're not optimizing for just one device. You need to optimize for everything. So there's two different things you can do. Number one, there is a custom solution that you could do. You could, there's some really custom code. It's expensive. It's time consuming to where you could literally uh, format images so that they will dynamically look right regardless of the screen size. The problem is it's hard to do, it takes a long time, and it's very, very expensive. So that's usually not the best way to go. It is possible, but it's expensive. The other thing you can do is when you do images, if you make sure the image is never larger than the smallest screen size. So in this case, the standard Kindle, if you use an image that's 800 pixels wide by 600 pixels tall, that would take up the entire full screen of the Kindle, of the smallest Kindle screen. So it would never get cut off, if, especially if you're doing you know, a children's book where you have full page images. It'll never get cut off. Now, if somebody's viewing it on the Kindle Fire or the iPad, it's not going to take up the full screen on those devices but it's not going to look bad either. It just won't take up the full screen. But again, for most people, that's the way to go. It'll be worth it because it'll look correct and won't be cut off or mess up your formatting on any device at all. So for most people, that's the way to go. So those are just some thoughts on image size for the Kindle. There's too many people that just go with the large image, image size so it looks good on the iPad or the Kindle Fire but it looks horrendous on some of these other Kindle devices. And you have to remember, a lot of people read their books on these cheaper Kindle devices. So you don't want to um, do something that makes it look bad on those because that will get you bad reviews and other things. It just makes it look bad. So those are some thoughts on images for your Kindle. If you have any questions or want more tips and tricks for publishing on the Kindle, make sure and visit our website at ebooktemplates101.com.